no apologies to Jeremy Kyle or indeed Jerry Springer. On <laughs> David, I'll be, I'll be interested to hear your take on this, because you struggle with alcoholism. Now, was it like David Cameron says, like an external event that happened to you, or, or were you culpable in some way? Could you well, take personal responsibility for it? Of course I was, you know, but the circumstances were whatever they, whatever they were at the time. And uh, unless I had the courage to go ask for help, uh, <laughs> it probably would have gone on. But at some point you have to recognize that about yourself. I take really umbrage with this, these, these two interviews. You wouldn't be the first person. Who I really, really, I, whoever these guys are, Jermaine Greer and the other guy, yeah. um, it's, it's really interesting to sit there and talk from a privileged position about the circumstances that face m millions of people, of highly skilled people who can't get work. Now, you know, you take responsibility for yourself. You know, and granted, I mean, we all have to, but you have to learn how to do that. It means how to be t taught. You know, I mean, the government is there not to solve all the problems by any means, but the government is there for the greater good. It's not there just for me. You know, it's not just about look after old David. It's about looking after a community, others, and they're there for, for education, for health, for all these things. And these are things that the government is responsible for, not for this guy, you know, in, individually necessarily. But for a, a lot of people out there who fall into this sieve, mm. okay. they can't get out of yeah. get out of Thanks for that, David. Mm. Um, we'll have a look at this. Um, it's a piece of art. Um, it's been widely praised this week. One expert calling it one of the finest contemporary examples of linear design. Here's the artist responsible. His name is Peter. <laughs> the incredible painting elephant from Thailand. It's not a hoax. There's no denying... Actually, I can't say this line. Do you want to say? There's no, no denying he's one. No, it's you. You go oh. on. You go for it. There's no denying he's one elephant artist. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm bum. Thank you. <laughs> Can you, I can't even can you bring myself the show to now? laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write that. We, uh, yeah, you did. That's we easy. asked the uh, one shows low, artist in residence. <laughs> <laughs> They're finding it funny. Yeah. <laughs> They're laughing at us, not with us. <laughs> Say it one more time. <laughs> no. Uh, There's another one coming up. Go yeah. on, <laughs> Our artist in residence, Phil Tufnell, to pack his trunk. <laughs> oh, God. oh, no. I, no. <laughs> He's off in search of genuine artistic talent at this year's Royal Academy Summer Exhibition. <laughs> Since I last visited the summer exhibition, they've made a few changes. Not happy with covering every inch of wall space inside, the work has exploded into the courtyard as well. This is the work of Sir Anthony Caro, a sculptor and respected member of the Royal Academy. But the great thing about the summer exhibition is anyone can have a go, as Delphine Reese found out when she submitted some of her work for the first time this year. Delphine didn't start painting until she retired. She had been busy raising five children and working full time, which didn't leave much room for art. As a family, we are quite artistic. And at school, I did do art but I finished my education much sooner than I thought because I married very young. So I think the artistic endeavor has always been there. When I retired, it was quite a difficult thing because from being a busy teacher and really enjoying my job, suddenly I had so much time on my hands and that set me exploring. Inspired initially by her garden, Delphine taught herself to paint using watercolours, and now there's no stopping her. Every available wall has my pictures. In fact, my daughter came and she said, Ma, I had no idea you had done this many paintings. When she started running out of wall space at home, Delphine came up with a plan to make some room. Every year I go to the summer exhibition and then last year, I went with a friend who was also an artist. And uh, we laughed and said, shall we enter? Well, when the time came, I phoned her and said, are you ready? She said, no, I, I went ahead. Every year, over 10,000 works are submitted to the summer exhibition. They could just about squeeze in a thousand of them, but would they have room for one of Delphine's? 
fact, when I received the letter, I, I just couldn't even open the envelope. I was so wanting to be accepted. And then when I heard, my husband said, yes, I squealed and I phoned my children. And oh, it, I, I'm reliving that moment. It was so, so exciting. Delphine and her entire family have come to London to see her work in the exhibition for the first time. So, Delphine, you must be proud as punch. I am thrilled beyond all measure. I never believed this wonderful thing could happen. And Deborah, you're Delphine's daughter. You must be proud of her. We're immensely proud of her. It's a richly deserved honour. And I have to say that it was my blue and white china, so I'm doubly pleased. <laughs> The painting that the Summer Exhibition accepted is called Jugglers, a departure from Delphine's flower studies. There it is. This is it. There it is. It's up on the wall. <laughs> You're obviously hugely excited. It is so thrilling. Yeah. Why do you think it's so special to you? Because I didn't have any training. This seems like the someone accepting that what I've done is ace. So, yippee, I think it's wonderful. And it doesn't get much better than this, really, does it? Being no, it hung doesn't. Up? No, it doesn't. Well, I'll tell you something, it does get a little bit better than this. Why? Because someone's bought it. <laughs> <laughs> The summer exhibition inspires people. There's a real chance for everyone to be included. Who knows? I might have a go myself next year. Congratulations to Delphine. The summer exhibition is open to the public until the 17th of August. Yeah. Carol, we are not letting you leave tonight until you tell us there's going to be glorious sunshine at some stage in the summer. Please. <sighs> well, this, Please. This Sunday, Christine's looking quite nice because many parts of the country... And that's it. Someone about Sunday. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're looking at a typical summer. In fact, perhaps a little bit more cloud than last year, more rain. Temperatures could be above average compared to last year. Mm. So fairly typical. Look, not... look outside. I know, that is not I know, summer I weather. I know. Well, we're not looking at the dizzy height of 2006. No. Yeah. But listen, the problem is, you forecast, I spent too much time forecasting where you can never tell for sure. What you should be doing is what the Chinese are doing, focusing on the technology <laughs> behind this where they're actually firing things into the sky. I think you can tell us what they're firing in an attempt to control the weather. How does that work then? <laughs> well, what they're firing are chemicals such as silver iodide into the clouds to try and either disperse the clouds or to actually form rain. Now, I don't think mm -hmm. anybody wants any more rain at the moment, but of course we all do need rain at certain times. So if the fire this stuff in, it goes into the cloud, the cloud has a lot of moisture in it. It's a very unreliable science, yeah. I have to say. You know, yeah. There's so many factors that could go wrong. You've got to fire it at the right time. The cloud formation's got to be at the right stage well, of development. Yeah. Well, somebody so, must have told them that I spent $500 yeah. million dollars on it, so is it all wasted, said Carol yeah, Kirkwood. Yeah. <laughs> Call <laughs> Beijing, know. tell them quick before they waste every <laughs> money on it. Well, I grew up in the, in the Midwest, I mean, uh, the farming, farming country, and that's been used a lot. But like you say, it's really... Uh, it's yeah, uncertain as to the result, you know? Mm. Yeah. Oh, well. Thank you, David. <laughs> yes, well, I'm here to support you, Carol. You need it. Oh, stop your foot <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier this week, Gordon Brown called on us all to stop wasting so much food. And Adrian's favourite statistic is that each day between us, we threw away 1.3... <laughs> yeah. 1.3 million unopened yogurt pots. Astonishing. Five and a half thousand whole chickens. And another hooter, please, for 440,000 unopened ready meals. Ready straight for the uh, landfill. Mm -hmm. Disgraceful. Yep. Nobody is more waste diverse on the One Show team than our green goddess, Lucy Seagull. Look, here she is now opening some short dated yogurt. All anxious like before somebody bins it. She wants to get in there first. <laughs> that must not Die in vain, that yogurt pot. No, just slurping it up now. Good old Lucy. Yeah. Yeah, she's I good. wondered that. I was, I was in that room before. I oh. wondered that. Did you? Oh, no. <laughs> There's one with you. She wouldn't give it to me. She's got, another, she's got another five yeah. under the boot. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy's been out helping a family use up what would otherwise go to waste. Every single day in the UK, we chuck away over four million apples and five and a half thousand entire chickens. In fact, the average household with children wastes over 600 pounds worth of food every year. And this family's no exception. Not only does Sue Fulham work full time, but she's also...